Jesus for one more day. Thank you, Jesus, for one more day. Amen. I want to say Happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers. Amen. Amen. Here. Amen. Let's give our hands. Throw our hands together. Celebrate the mother. And I want to just lift up a verse from the scripture found in John, the Gospel of John, in the 19th verse. Yeah. And in John, the 19th uh, chapter of the Gospel of St. John, we find in the 25th, 26th, and 27th verses, these words. Gospel of St. John. 19th chapter, Amen. the 25th, 26th, and 27th verses. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then said he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own home. Let the church say amen. Amen. Maybe see. <laughs> On a day like today, we have so many opportunities to think of all of the beautiful memories that our mothers have uh, made for us. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. And it's important to look at the scripture and see that uh, when I was young in the church, little boy, I had to obey my mother, and I didn't want to keep still. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Go ahead. Go ahead. And oftentimes, my mother was up in the choir stand. But there were some others sitting out there, some other mothers, uh -huh, uh -huh. and they would take the place of my mother. Uh -huh. Because if I was scooting around a little too much, one of them would reach over and kind of touch me and would give me that look. Uh -huh. Did you see that happening here in this verse? What happened? Said when Jesus saw his mother, and the disciple standing by whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. But she had some others with her. His mother's sister, Mary, and Mary Magdalene. Uh -huh. So, usually, women are not singular. They have a friend and another friend and another friend. They usually are at least double or triply walking together. All right. Now, somebody may ask, and I know on a day like today, it comes up, Pastor, why did God create woman in the first place? Go ahead. See, that's what men think when they're mad. <laughs> Why did God create woman uh -huh. in the first place? And if God were here today, he might attempt to even answer such a strange question because it's God's business Amen. that he created woman. Uh -huh. 
God's business. Now, if he could just sit the woman down and look at her, he would say to her, Woman, when I created the heavens and the earth, I spoke them into being. All right. Go ahead, fix it. When I created man, I formed him from the dust of the earth All right. All right. and breathed life into his nostrils. But you, woman, fix it. I fashioned you after I breathed life into man because I knew if I breathed into your nostrils, your nostrils were too delicate. I allowed a deep sleep to come over man so I could patiently and perfectly make you. Uh-huh, fix it, fix it. See, men ain't always angry with women. <laughs> they know that the woman is a beautiful archetype. Uh -huh. She's a sanctuary of God's goodness. Right. A sanctuary of God's beauty. Amen. A right. sanctuary of God's holiness. A sanctuary of God's fill in the blank. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. Now, when he put man to sleep, and some women say we still sleep. <laughs> when he put man to sleep, man could not interfere with the creativity. Uh -huh. So from one bone, he's looking at the woman now. Go ahead, fix it. From one bone, one, I created you. Uh -huh. Man. Now, I chose the real. Why the real, God? Why the real? Because the real's job is to protect the heart and the lungs. Amen. All right, fix it. So that man cannot be hurt. It, it, this is God's. Fix it. This is God's working now. I'm going somewhere. Stay with me. Stay with me. Uh -huh. Around this one bone, I shaped you. I molded you. I created you perfectly and beautifully. Your characteristics are just like that rib. Woman, you are strong but delicate. You are fragile. Yet you provide protection for the most delicate organ in the man. His heart. I'm going somewhere. Stay with me. Right, stay with me now. Stay. You with me? Why members are you with me? There's going to be a test after the sermon. Now, the delicate rib cage will allow itself to be broken before it will allow damage to the heart. Amen. So the rib cage supports the heart and the heart is the vital organ in the whole body. Amen. Then he reminds woman and he's talking to men. He says, woman, you were not taken from his feet. Go ahead. All right. To be up under him. Uh -huh. I need to let that sink in. All right. All right. Some men have the idea that, and they take some verses from the scripture that say that let the woman be silent. Well, you have to understand where that was given. This was a pagan land and it was given to a particular people. Some societies had boisterous women. Uh -huh. If you give them half a chance, they'll take over everything. Uh -huh. <laughs> some people like that. You, you know some people. Yes, uh -huh. you, I, I'm about to lose them, Derek. I need help. Uh -huh. I'm about to lose. Some sisters are, they have a tendency, if you give them half a chance, uh -huh. they'll take over everything. And so that writer in the Bible said, tell the women, I would not allow a woman to be teaching and speaking in the church. Let these women be silent. Uh -huh. Sometimes you can go into a certain area. And sometimes, you know, it may be New Jersey. 
I said that because there's somebody here from New Jersey. Uh -huh. <clears throat> <clears throat> I ain't trying to start no fight or nothing. <laughs> but it might be New York. You know, they're used to kind of pushing a little bit. You know, West Virginia women, they have a little tendency to be just a little calm and a little, you know, they, they act like they're a little submissive anyway. <laughs> you know, but they, they, that's, that's just the, the front. You know, you, you give them half a chance and you, they'll take over too. So you have to understand why that was written and where he was talking to the people. And God is saying to this woman, you were taken not from his head to be above him. Go ahead. Uh -huh. And sometimes when women come together, it's because they've been so mistreated that they want to get back at every man they come in touch with. Uh -huh. And they have that attitude, I'm going to punish you for all the men who have punished me. Uh -huh. And they can't get anywhere in a relationship for trying to punish this one right here uh -huh. and let you know you ain't going to be above me. See, when you get like this, you got to keep on preaching. Uh -huh. Don't wait on them. <clears throat> God is speaking to the woman and he says, I'm going to take you by my side and I'm going to let you be by my side. I want you to understand that I put you beside him because I took you from his rib uh -huh. and his rib is a protector Amen. because you're a perfect angel you're a beautiful girl you've grown to be a woman of excellence uh -huh. and your eyes show it Amen. you really don't need a whole lot of help around your eyes because uh -huh. God can see in your eyes Amen. your heart Men only look upon your eye. Yeah. They can't see your heart. Oh, Go ahead. You can think about that one after you get home. <laughs> so your eyes, God is saying, you don't have to change your eyes. He says, your lips, God says, I've seen your lips. Men only look upon the lips, you know, what they got on. Uh -huh. <laughs> God looks upon the lips, but he's looking for the times that you have prayed yeah. and in love called his holy name. Yeah. That's what God sees in your lips. Yeah. And then he says your nose is so perfect. Your nose is perfect in its form. You don't need to go to the doctor and say change my nose. Uh -huh. You know God said I made your nose just like it's supposed to be. Go ahead, fix it. Yes. And then he, he says that your face. He said, I made your face in your deepest sleep. And then he said, I held your heart close to my heart. Uh -huh. And of all that live and breathe, he said, woman, you are most like me. Fix it. All right. Woo! All right. Woo! All right. Now, Adam walked with God in the cool of the day and he was lonely. Adam couldn't see God. He couldn't touch him. He could only feel his presence. All right. So everything God said, I wanted Adam to share an experience with me. He said, I put it in you. I want you to get that. Did you hear me? All right. He says, I walked with Adam but Adam couldn't see me. Uh -huh. He could only feel my presence. Uh -huh. He said, and everything that was missing in that interaction, he said, I put it in you, one. Uh -huh. That's why you are so necessary. I want all the men to just give the woman a hand clap of praise. Uh -huh. Amen. Now, I know that that was tough for you to do. I know it was. Amen. 
It was a sacrifice. It was a sacrificial praise. But one of the sweetest memories that anyone can have is the memory of a good mother. Many of you can remember your mother. Some of you have your mother still with you. And I can remember my own mother trying to keep me quiet in church. And she would sometimes have a friend out there in the pew. And uh, her friend didn't mind taking me outside and giving me a little attitude adjustment. <laughs> if, you know, my mother gave her the nod, as if to say, take him on outside and show him what's up. <laughs> you know, and, and, and when she took me by the hand, I, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm going to be good, I'm going to be good. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm related to some of... Uh, some of the, some people over here ain't gonna call no name. I can also remember my mother praying for me when I was young. There's something about a woman praying to God, and God made the woman special. Yeah, and He put inside of her something that is not inside of man. There's a sensitivity and an understanding that a man cannot have. Amen. And I'm going to prove it to you. Because the Bible says that uh, he was looking upon the people in the scripture and he said, how I would have uh, covered you with my wings as a mother hen. Now, man, he don't have no motherly feelings. Go ahead. Go ahead. You know, but God can have motherly feelings. And he said, when the storm comes or when a fire is about to burn, the mother hen would spread her wings and the little chicks would run up under the wings uh -huh. and get close to her body. And then she'd drop her wings to protect the little ones. Uh -huh. There was a little write-up in the paper where this house had burned down. This farm had caught on fire and the the little uh, barn had burned down and they were going through checking everything. They saw a lump on the floor and they wondered what it was and somebody, you know, kind of kicked it to see what it was and, and it was the fire had consumed this chicken, dead chicken. Uh -huh. And uh, out from under that dead chicken ran two little bitties, two little babies. Well, the mother had sacrificed her life, covering her babies, and the babies lived, but she sacrificed her life so that no harm would come to them. So many times in our lives, our mothers sacrificed themselves. Sometimes when even cooking on the stove and setting the table, you know, she had to make sure everybody had something to eat. And then sometimes there was not even enough for her. And she would act like she had enough. Just to make sure that everybody had enough. I know some of you modern and uh, modern mothers don't know what it's like to have an old scrub board. You don't know what a scrub board is, but that was when you had to wash your clothes and yeah. have a number three tub out there and put some water in it. Yeah. Then you put the washboard down in the tub. You put the clothes down in there and then you take it and scrub the clothes over yeah. top. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Scrub the clothes with that rubbing board. Yeah. Hey Amen. They didn't have the fancy washing machines. Uh -huh. Didn't have the fancy uh, dryers. They would, after they'd wash them, they'd wring them out and they'd hang them on the line on the back porch. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. They sacrificed their own time, their own uh, uh, lives for their children. Uh -huh. Now, some of you remember uh, the prayers that she would teach you to pray. And I want you, if you remember, I want you to help me say this. And I remember my mom saying, now get down on your knees, son. Get down on your knees right beside the bed before I go to bed. 
you know, after she you know, washed you up and scrubbed you up, you know, and you didn't want, you, you didn't think your neck was dirty no how, right? Your neck wasn't bothering you, she done scrubbed your neck and rubbed all the color off you. Oh, oh. And then she tell you to get down, you know, on your knees. And, and when you got down on your knees, she said these words. She said, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Amen. Amen. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. Amen. Now, some of you may remember mother during a night of sickness when you were sick and you've forgotten all about it. But I guarantee you she never did. She hasn't forgotten it. When you were small and sick, some of you can remember as she would tuck you in bed and pull that cover on up to your neck and she'd reach down and kiss you on your forehead. Amen. Making sure that you were going to get in bed and stay in bed and go to sleep. And you wanted to stay awake for a while. But she would tell you, now you're going to sleep now. And sometimes when she'd leave the room, you know, you had this urge that you wanted to get up. And sometimes mama would have to come back in there and give you some persuasion. <clears throat> See, that's not against the law. Persuasion. So that many of you have wonderful memories of your mother. And, but there's something else I need to say about mothers that many women have been kept back uh, because of certain things, certain rules in society. And I'd like to talk to you about uh, some of this because every mother that you know was not born a saint. She was not born a saint. Because the Bible says that we all are born in sin. So you mean to tell me my mother it was a sinner, yes. Every mother born into sin. Every man born into sin. And shaped in iniquity. And we need to be saved from sin. Amen. So in order for you to do that, there has to be a transition made. Amen. We learn to do many things. And I don't know if they modern mothers today uh, even know how to cook beans. Uh, modern mothers, they, they uh, do, do modern day men even have an appetite for beans? I love beans. I love me some good brown beans, Lord, cook the right way. You know, it's just, oh, hallelujah, make me want to shout right now. Some good cornbread. Not that sorry cornbread. Some good cornbread. I, I, and I got to share this. I got to tell you this. I, I, I said I wasn't going to say it, but I got to share it. I, we had my wife's burial, her home going. Oh, yes, on, on a Friday. I, got a, I was so sad. I went home. And on Saturday morning, I got a phone call. Said, Reverend Staples? I said, yes. She said, Reverend? She said, I want to tell you, she said, that now that you're a single man, this is Saturday now, I just now put my wife way on fire. She said, uh, now that you're a single man, she said, I want to be the first in line to put my beard in. feeling low. I was feeling low. And she, you know, she called me and then she repeated it again in case I didn't get it the first time. And she said, uh, and I said, what, what did you say? And she said it again. And she said, she said, I want you to know, she said, that I can cook. She said, I can really cook, Reverend. She said, and I can clean a house. She said, 
These modern women don't know nothing about cleaning no house. She said, now pay no attention to the fact that I'm 98 years old. Pay no attention to that, brother. She said, I'm 98 years old. She said, but don't pay no attention to that. Now don't pay no attention. Reminded me again, I can really cook, man. I can clean a house. And these, and these, uh, these younger women, they can't clean no house like I can. I started laughing. And she did exactly what I needed. She called me to give me a lift. I thank the Lord for her. I thank the Lord for her. I thank the Lord. I, I said I wasn't going to tell that, but I'm just going to help. I, I just needed, I needed a lift. And she got, so I, I, then she told me who she was. And I've been knowing her since I was as young as that little girl sitting right there. So I've been knowing her since I, I used to go to her house with my daddy. My daddy was the pastor, and we used to eat at her house way down there in Stokesburg. Amen. But you see, women are born and shaped in sin just like men are. From, from a beautiful baby born into sin, the, a life of sin, which means that we have to have our heart changed. We have to be saved from sin. And that's why Jesus came into the world. Now, I know you don't know anything about buttermilk. I know you don't. Beans, cornbread, buttermilk, black-eyed peas, I, you know, some good old creasy greens, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. You know. uh, let me stop talking about food. But see, you know something about an electric sweeper. You know something about an electric dishwasher. Yeah, but there's other mothers from way back when. What they put up with to try to get us in a better position so that we wouldn't have to go through what they went through. And they got no reward for it other than seeing you do better. Then you come through when they finally open the doors of education, when they finally open up jobs, when they finally give us a chance. Now you want to show up at the job with your gluteus maximus showing. Gluteus Maximus, that's up somewhere around your waist. <laughs> you have to understand that people have sacrificed to get us where we are. Amen. Amen. And I'm just about to finish here. But they swept. They swept the floor with an old broom. And that was the only broom. That was the only one. Now, the dishwasher, there was a pot or pan, yeah. and they put hot water in it, and they would take each dish and wash it. Uh -huh. Amen. Yeah. Now, I don't know about you, whether or not you know how to actually wash a dish. <laughs> you, you, you pay a machine to wash your dishes. <laughs> and I asked my wife, I said, baby, when was it that you really really made up your mind that I was the man for you. I asked her that while she was sick right there, you know, in the last year. And uh, we talked a lot and shared so much. Amen. And uh, I thought about some moonlit night maybe when we were walking and talking and it was just a beautiful evening and it was cool and, you know, my mind was just floating. And uh, she said, when I pulled up and the car blew the horn. I saw you run out on the porch. She said that you had soap suds hanging off your hand all the way back to your elbow. Uh -huh. And you were talking about, uh, can you wait five more minutes? Say, I'm not through washing uh, my mama's pots and pans yet. Say, can you wait on me before I, 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 I get in the car and we take a ride? She said, oh, yeah, I can wait on you. She said, I made up my mind right there. He's a keeper. <laughs> she, she, she messed up my romantic thought 
because she was looking at the fact that here's a man, his mother has taught him to clean. His mother has taught him how to clean up a house. His mother's taught him how to wash dishes, how to do pots and pans. And you don't wash one dish and set it down and leave the rest. You gotta wash the pots and pans. Sometimes men think that that's a woman's job. I'm gonna fix it up. Don't nobody start nothing. I got Reverend Cook, Reverend Smith. I got all it. I got some help up in here. Now, the last part I want to make is this: that um, a woman's place is, we've been taught is in the home. Yes, but it's also the woman's place is in the church. Amen. A woman's place is in the church. Now I want to show you something. Because the scripture will bear it out. And I dare you to read it. Because Jesus hand picked 12 men. But when, and they were with him as long as things were going well. But when things got rough and they grabbed Jesus, took him in, down into a, a chamber and they began testing him and trying him. And kept him up all night. They beat him all night long. Don't you know that all through the morning and the next day when he was being abused, none of the men were there. Uh -huh. Don't you know that when they took him up to Calvary and they stretched him out and put nails in his hands and his feet, don't you know that when they put him down into the grave when he gave up the ghost and died, that out there in the graveyard, not one man showed up. Uh -huh. Not one man. Uh -huh. I dare you to look in the Bible. Man. I dare you. The women showed up. Uh -huh. Thank you, God. Amen. The women showed up. Amen. They came to nurture his wounds. Yeah. They came and the stone was rolled away. Amen. Now, I want you to know that when times get hard, it's easy to have people walking by. Oh, yes it is. Uh -huh. When times get rough, you can tell when, who's on your side. Amen. You can tell what they made of. Oh, yes you can. Oh, yeah. Because when things get rough, oh yeah, you'll find out who's with you. Because what they'll do is they'll be with you when you got a good job, you're making some money, driving a nice car, you go to the place and get your hair did, your nails did, and your toes did. You know, they're with you then. But don't let it happen that you didn't get your hair done. And your nails are getting freaky looking. And your toes are looking like Oh, pig sausages. Uh -uh. uh uh. When somebody really cares for you, they'll be with you when you're up. They'll be with you when you're down. And they'll encourage you and tell you you're not made for being down. God didn't make you to be the bottom, God didn't fix you to be somebody's under somebody's foot. God fixed it in your heart so that you can rise up and be somebody that God wants you to be. You think that you're supposed to be down, but the Lord that made you, he put it in you before you was born. He gave you a purpose in life. You are wasting your life unless you find your purpose in Christ. You're wasting a good life until you find your purpose. God says, I want you to be up. I want you to be an example of me. But the, the people, the, the men walked away. And you know what they did? They went fishing. They went fishing. One of them said, I'm going fishing. What about the rest of you? They said, we're going with you. You're going to always have followers. 
Somebody's going to make the decision to go fishing. Then the rest of them are going to fall in line. All right. But the women, they went and they did. I need to say this before I close. On Mother's Day, mothers have to raise the children to fight against the evils of society. The schoolhouse is not the place that they learn how to fight. The home is the place they learn. The home. Now, if God were here, Somebody would say, and I've heard it said, well, why did God, why did, you know, why did he invent evil? But you gotta go back to Genesis. God made Adam and he made Eve. Amen. And don't you know that the snake, the snake had feet and legs. Uh -huh. If you don't believe me, go look in your uh, biology books, uh -huh. your anatomy books, and you'll find out that the snake, even today, has hips. You don't believe that? Go look it up. The snake has hips, which means that once God, he talked to Eve and he whispered to her when she left Adam, she's stronger when she's with him. Did you hear me? She wandered away from him. And that's when the devil, through the voice of the snake, talked to her. And told her, you don't need to do that. Do this. He took the truth of God and cut it in half. <laughs> took the truth of God. You don't need it. You don't have to do that. You can do this. You know everything. And guess what? She ate the wicked fruit from that poisonous tree. And then she took it home and gave it to her husband, Adam. He didn't ask her any questions. Go ahead. He knew what God had said. Amen. He knew. And that's the way we get. When we've been with him a while, she said, here you go, baby. You here you go. Okay. <laughs> said, stand up and go ahead. He said, all right. <laughs> Sit down over here. Okay. <laughs> Buried my wife on Friday. I was at the grave site on Saturday morning. Standing there at the grave. And I first thing I said when I got there, I said, baby, I don't know what to do. I felt lost. I'm so used to her telling me. You know, she talked, I talked. I talked, she talked. But the long result was she told me what to do. Now, you know, those windows on the left side of the house, they need to be washed. I'm like, them windows ain't bothering me. <laughs> you know, I ain't even looking out them windows. <laughs> you know, they can come up with a long list. My list is short. And she said, and don't forget that you did, and you need, I'm like, Lord Jesus. But I didn't know what to do. I said, what do I do? And I got to thinking about all the times that we had stuff to do together. I got to say this. Mothering, some children are easy to mother. Some are hard-headed. Some of y'all need to say amen. Some, some are hard to mother. And then, you know, when you get down there, some children will just follow along. And, uh, you know, when Tracy was small, she, uh, she'd be content. Give her a doll baby, put it in her arms, and a book, sit in the corner. She'd sit there for about four hours straight, never would move. And then I thought, shoot, I got this, I got this fatherhood thing down. I, I got this parenting thing deep, you know. And then all of a sudden, then Kristen came along. And I thought, oh my God. <laughs> and I've said it before. I've said it to her. If you had come first, I would have had one child. <laughs> but God knew that I had to send the easy one first. I had to send the easy. Because 
she was too much like me. Uh -huh. That's what got on my nerves. That's what got on my nerves. And my mother reminded me. I said, yeah, you know something, something, She said, mm-hmm. She said, I tried to tell you, mm-hmm, it's coming up again. <laughs> and it's coming up again. I know that's right, Pastor. But a mother that loves Jesus, that is that will stick in the baby's mind and heart. If you whatever, wherever you 